Zero Project started with the idea of trying to curtail the rash of gang-related graffiti throughout Delridge. And then it sort of blossomed into this really amazing artistic project. And this year we're taking on the 210-foot retaining wall of our parking lot here at the Youngstown Cultural Arts Center and employing professional teaching artists to work with youth from Seattle Youth Violence Prevention Initiative to engage in the artistic creative process. They did a bunch of research going on field trips uh, to historical sites and to the Duwamish Longhouse here in West Seattle. So the students were, were really engaged in the design process throughout and then working with the artists to create this design. I think it's really important to have the youth paint because um, specifically this group, you know, it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to learn job skills. So another aspect of this is there's the art and there's the community aspect, but there's also some real kind of concrete aspects that I like about this program, which are that the youth are, um, it's work training. So they're learning skills that'll benefit them later um, as they move on into a career. So the way that the story evolved uh, was really a long process. That was, I would say, the bulk of the actual mural project was the development phase. Um, so we did what I like to call cultural and community research, where we went out and um, visited a bunch of local sites that we thought were relevant. Um, and the students uh, basically documented their experiences with cameras and took notes and brainstormed about it. And so all of those field trips of sorts built up to our brainstorm where we developed the concepts and then turned those into images and came up with a narrative. What inspired the youth the most for this mural was actually our trip to the Longhouse and the, visiting the people of the Duwamish River. They told us a story of, a, it was pretty much a rain dance story, they told us a story of the river and the harm that the growth of the people had caused to the river and that how we ourselves had to change that. So basically this is the process of which we use to um, get the, all of the ideas for the mural and how we put them together. And so first these are just all the ideas that we came up with in general and the two big ideas that we had were probably nature and culture. This is also a work readiness program in addition to an arts program and so part of that and making this a professional process and sort of helping the kids understand what public art process is, I invited folks from the city and from the community to come and sit in as a design review panel. Three, one, two, three. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thanks so much. So one of my ideas was to have a cloud and then to have it raining into a pot and then out of the pot is coming out the Seattle skyline. And so then it could represent like the growing of Seattle. And since it's like raining on it, it's like washing out all of the nastiness and dirty stuff that's in the city. We tried to show the kids some basic brush techniques and how to control their arm and wrist and movement. And uh, also some shade and value. Uh, that was basically the only intro that they had into this mural painting or any acrylic latex painting at all. I painted the skyline, I painted the tr some of the trees, um, some of the clouds, and I hope, I actually hope paint a little bit of everything, but them is the main things that I painted. I never painted before, that was, this mirror was my first time painting, but I actually like painting. The story that the mural tells is, basically it is a story of, um, kind of a chronological evolution in the local history here, uh, beginning with nature and the native people living in harmony with nature here, um, and then the growth of the city and industrialization coming and bringing pollution. And then we have the mural take a turn at that point um, to a more optimistic uh, side of things. and. Um, there's a native dancer that comes and brings a cleansing rain in that causes the city to have a rebirth of sorts. Um, and that causes kind of a growth of plant life in the city again. And, and then there's a big cleanup, community cleanup of the Duwamish River that's depicted. Uh, and that is followed by a kind of semi-abstract depiction of 
a hopeful future where we have the um, tribal elder, uh, Cecile, of the Duwamish tribe. She's the first face depicted, and she's kind of lighting the pathway for a series of youth, and it's supposed to represent the diversity in the Del Ridge neighborhood as well. Um, and then it, kind of, it finishes with the title of the piece, which is called Awaken, mm -hmm. to represent that rebirth. Stroke. And so we dedicate this mural to the public and to the community of Delridge. Alright, can we get a countdown? Let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey! When I was asked, uh, to have my picture taken for this, I first asked why. And when um, Lewis had explained why and what the what the mural was going to represent, I just told him to say yes. Uh, what what they designed here is really something that's going to push forward for the future and every generation to come. So I, I, I'm honored to be on the wall. Um, forever, that's going to be kind of. It's gonna be kind of odd, but my son will one day grow up and he'll see me up there and ask why, and I'll be able to tell him. So it feels pretty cool.